Hello everyone, it's Elena and today we will be doing an abstract landscape in Procreate using my amazing alcohol ink brushes and you're very welcome to experiment with any other brushes that you may have as well. You don't have to use these brushes, but if you are interested in those, the link to the brushes is in the description down below. And when I say abstract landscape, I've had questions about this when I previously did a, an abstract landscape. And um, basically what I mean by that is that this is an abstract piece that is not really meant to represent anything in particular, but it is inspired by the curves and the lines of a landscape. And this style for me was very much influenced by Ink Real Studio, which is one of my favorite artists on Instagram. And I have her book as well, and she's just super talented and inspiring and does a lot of art in this particular style. So I would encourage you to go and check out her page. And I've put a link in the description below to her Instagram and her website. So you should definitely go check out her work. She's really inspiring. So um, let's just go ahead and dive right in. My canvas size is 20 by 16 inches at 300 DPI and I will be using my amazing alcohol ink brush set. For this piece, I wanted a really minimalist color palette, so I made a new palette and I named it Abstract AI Landscape. And now I'm just gonna go ahead and select just a few colors from the color palettes that come with this brush set and add them to this new color palette. And I will go ahead and upload this new color palette to my free resource library, which is available to my email subscribers. And if you're not a subscriber yet, you can go ahead and subscribe in the link down below. So I've chosen my brush called Color Changing Number 5 and I'm going to start out in this orangish red color and I'm just going to make that a pretty big brush size and make a stripe across the page and this is going to be the top of my landscape so that I have some stripes down below it and then it's just going to sort of fade off to the top of the page. Now I'm choosing the dark blue color and changing to color changing brush number four. And I'm gonna do the same thing with this down here at the bottom. And I will mostly draw over top of this, but I just wanted a little bit of that texture peeking through. So now I'm changing brushes again. I'm gonna go ahead and switch to my hair dryer brush, which is a blend only brush. So you have to use it on the same layer where you are already drawing. And I'm going to just take this brush and use the pressure to push pretty hard and pull up from this pink on the top. I'm doing it several times in a row right on top of each other and I'm using less and less pressure as I go. So where you can see the pink a bit more strongly, that's where I didn't use as much pressure. So I like to use this one over top of itself several times in a row using less and less pressure each time in order to have more of a faded out look like you would get with uh, an actual hair dryer or a heat tool or something like that if you're using it to push the alcohol inks around. Now I've selected the Heavy Bleed Blender brush and I'm using this brush, which is also a blend only brush to go in a downward motion on top of some of these areas where I've used the hairdryer in order to remove some of the harsh lines. And I really like to, if you've seen a lot of my tutorials, you know I like to use a mixture of harsh lines and very smooth fade outs or fade ins. So that's why I like to use these two different blender brushes in tandem with each other.
so I'm choosing the light blue color and I'm gonna go ahead and select the blended brush stroke and make a long sort of squiggly line down here right underneath of this pink that I've drawn at the top and I'll just go over that a couple of times in order to give it a bit of a layered look and I'm just gonna keep on doing more stripes in this landscape down below so now I'm just gonna select my XL blended stroke which is kind of similar to the blended brush stroke but it's bigger and it has a lot more blend within it and I'm just doing the same thing building up the texture experimenting with different kind of squiggly lines along the top of this I'm selecting the spray blender brush and I'm going to run it along some of these lines in order to give it a bit more texture. Now I've selected the smoky brush and I'm going to add a very textured line right through the middle here just to change it up a bit. Now I've chosen the blended brush stroke again in the dark navy blue color and I'm going to keep on building these lines on top of each other working downward using both this brush and the XL blended stroke. Now I've chosen the color splatter brush in turquoise and I'm going to add a bit of splatter along this last line. Now back to the XL blended stroke in order to add some orange down at the bottom in order to sort of correspond with the orange at the top. Now I've chosen the spray blender because I wanted to add a bit more texture here at the top. Now I'm using the ink pool edger brush to add a bit more interest to some of these lines. So now I'm going to go ahead and add the metallics and I'm adding a new layer on top of the piece and I'm switching to my metallics color palette that comes with the alcohol ink brushes. And now I'm going to go ahead and select my metallic ink liner brush in sort of a light gold color. Make that brush fairly small and I'm going to go ahead and trace along this line where I had previously drawn with the ink pool edger just to add some metallic ink flake 
effects and periodically I'm going to scribble a bit more in certain areas to sort of make it look like the flakes have gathered and pulled up in one area. choosing the foil liner brush in order to have a slightly different metallic line down here at the bottom with these dark blue lines and I'm letting my hand shake a bit as I'm making this line so that it looks a bit blobby. Now using both the ultra fine glitter brush and the metallic ink liner brush, I'm going to messy up this line of foil that I just made so that there are some splatters coming off the sides. At this point I decided that I wanted the metallics to look a little bit more 3D, so I added a new layer on top of the previously existing metallics layer, and I chose more of a pinkish gold color in the metallic ink liner and started adding some more flakes over top of some of these splatters. Now I'm just adding some ultra fine glitter down at the bottom as well. At this point I decided to add some splatters, so I switched back to the previous color palette and I chose my color splatter brush and I just added some color splatters all around to add some interest.
Now I've selected my circle dropper brush and I'm going to add some bigger drops of ink in different colors all around the piece. And you can use the pressure to control how light or dark it is in the middle and how big the drops are. Sometimes you can add a few drops on top of each other to have it be a bit more interesting. And so I'm just gonna experiment with this all around the piece in different colors. At this point, I didn't really like how at the top where everything is pink, I didn't really like how you could see the repetition in the pattern. So I wanted to change up the bit on the right that was kind of recognizable so that it looked different than this, the left side. So I chose the blended brush stroke brush in the same color, and I'm just tracing along some of these lines in order to create a different looking pattern. So at this point I'm pretty happy with how it has turned out. I like how there's a lot of different texture in different areas and how there's a contrast with the colors but they're still working together. And so I think if I were to do this uh, another time I might experiment with a few more hills and valleys but overall I'm pretty happy with how it turned out. Now to finish it off, I'm just going to use the ultra fine glitter brush in order to add some blue glitter along the line in the middle where I had used the smoky brush previously because I just wanted a bit more color variation and a bit more texture variation along that line to sort of break up the rest of it. So I hope that you enjoyed that and thank you so much for watching and I'd love to see what you come up with. You're very welcome to tag me on Instagram or post in our Facebook group and I would just really love to see what you come up with and give you some feedback and give you some love. So um, anyway, thanks again for watching and I hope that you have a really great day. Mm -hmm.